My name is Lehman, and for 23 years, I was a guard at the United States Penitentiary in Marion, Illinois. What I'd like to talk about today is uh, Bruce Pierce, a founding member of a racist group called The Order. They were uh, active, very active, in the early 80s. They robbed uh, armored cars in uh, the Seattle area. They eventually went to California, uh, stuck up an armored car there, and, and got away with $3.6 million, which they were using to fund a guerrilla army that uh, eventually consisted of about 20 people. Um, and Bruce Pierce was one of the leaders of this phantom army that was going to start race riots. And it was all based on a book called The Turner Diaries that they believed was going to um, start a massive race war and um, black people would be sent back to Africa and Jewish people and other mongrels would be uh, deported or killed. Um, what really got him into trouble, besides the, uh, the multi-million dollar armed robberies, uh, was um, there was a guy named Alan Berg. And this Bruce Pierce, along with his buddies uh, David Lane and Richard Scutari, tracked him to his house, took a Mac-10, which is a very small, compact, fully automatic, I mean machine gun, and they machine gunned him right there in the driveway. Um, Bruce Pierce was the guy that pulled the trigger. He murdered the guy in cold blood for political reasons because he didn't believe that uh, Jewish people had a right uh, and black people have a right to live in the United States in peace. Pierce and his ilk decided that, uh, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't have those rights. So the Nazi movement, and by all means, he's a Nazi. He didn't say he was a neo-Nazi to me. He told me he was a Nazi. He was studying German. That's the only reason I ended up talking to him at one point was I heard him practice in German, and his German is awful. So I corrected him on a word or two. He's like, oh, oh you speak German? Yes, I speak a, a German. I was there for three years. Oh, wow, now all of a sudden I'm a great guy because I was in Germany for three years as a soldier. Um, believe me, when he arrived... He was um, in this soldier, I'm a victim, prisoner of war of the Zog government, which is uh, Zog, something like the Zionist organized government or something like that, or Zionist owned government. I, I'm not exactly sure, but he calls it the Zog government, and it has something to do with Zionist. And he believed that um, Jews ran everything. It was a secret Jewish organization to run everything. And uh, he came in with a guy named David Lane and Richard Scutari. Now, I have almost no memory of David Lane. Uh, he was probably around here and there, but I almost never spoke to him. Richard Scutari I have spoken to um, on many occasions. Uh, didn't really like him either. Um, he was supposed to be a big martial arts guy, and the last time I saw him was in December of 2012 when I retired. And he was in the communications management unit at that time. Now, Bruce Pierce, uh, he couldn't sleep at night, so he would lie and tell people that he had a cold so that he could get cold medicine and go to sleep. Um, he steady worked in that cell. Now, here's the point that I would like to make. People who commit homicide the way Bruce Pierce did, he planned it meticulously and then carried it out. People who do murders like that for political purposes Never give up. So when you, the jury, sentenced him to 252 years, what you sentenced him to was to inspire other people. He said in that cell, I watched him day after day, writing letters, uh, communicating with other um, neo-Nazis, Nazi groups, other racist groups, and he inspired people to commit racist motivated crimes. By failing to put him to death, not only did you risk people's lives like me, because now he has an opportunity to murder people like me, and believe me, when a correctional officer dies, it's not like the police officer who shot and says, owie, owie, and bleeds to death and falls down dead. A, 
a correctional officer murdered by an individual like Bruce Pierce is stabbed 200 times, has his head stumped on till his skull cracks, has an eye dug out with a fashioned from a spoon, knife, or a piece of metal or a nail and driven into his brain. He is uh, kicked repeatedly until his ribs break and when all that's done he might get stabbed into the in the uh, spine to sever it to uh, finish the job. That's how people like Bruce Pierce, um, Richard Lane, or David Lane and Richard Scutari murder people. It happened not long ago. So, uh, what my point is, people like Bruce Pierce need to be sentenced to death and not put in a, in a housing unit where people like me have to take care of them and watch them inspire hundreds of other people through articles, uh, personal contact. This, uh, this is allowed by the Bureau of Prisons. And uh, why why this kind of stuff goes on, I, I am dumbfounded. <laughs> uh, when, when Pierce first arrived in prison, his first day, when he first walked into the United States Penitentiary in Marion, there was a guy named Benson, Lieutenant Benson, who was in charge of the ship that day, later Captain Benson, and, and later um, handing out basketballs, Benson, because apparently couldn't handle Captain, handle Captain. Um, he said, hey, Pierce, I see that you're doing 252 years. He said, you know, if you fly right and you don't cause us any trouble, we can get at least a third of that sentence off for good time. <laughs> that was, uh, that was the, um, um, sense of humor back then. Probably still is in some places. Um, Bruce Pierce is dead. He died in 2010. He was about 56 years old when he died. And uh, that's about how old I am now. And uh, he did 23 years in prison, just like I did, except he lived there. And I went home every, every night. Um, I was in the Seattle area when he was committing his uh, armed robberies. They were in the newspapers of when he was robbing the armored cars. That's when he got good at it and went to California and knocked over a $3.6 million one. Um, that's pretty much it about Bruce Pierce. I, I did know him well. And uh, I'm telling you that the uh, Nazis are the most dedicated, dangerous people for their cause that I have ever met. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of them, subscribe right there. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. And please hit the like button. It really helps. Congratulations, officially. Um, at this time, uh, Mr. Lehman, I'd ask you to come forward, repeat the oath of office um, to serve on the Franklin Johnson Massac Williamson Regional Board of Trustees. Where do you want me to stand? Uh, Mr. Wilmore will administer the oath of To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. 